Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your English teacher from Atamayu's Model School for Boys. Uh, inshallah, in this video, we're going to continue our lessons from Unit 7. As usual, it's uh, about the alternatives of energy or power. Uh, in this video, inshallah, we are going to talk about three things. The first thing is the new vocabulary of the lesson. And we are going to uh, know some set book questions. And in the end of the video, we have to know how to answer the summary making question in the end of the exam. So let's get started with the vocabulary of the lesson. The first word that we have today is, as you can see here, uh, this boy is suffering from uh, difficulty in breathing. If you cannot breathe easily, uh, so you suffer from asthma. Asthma is a noun. It's uh, a medical state in which you cannot breathe easily because of dust, because of smoke, or because of health problems. So this is asthma. And it's a noun. Repeat after me. Asthma. Asthma. The second word, as you can see, you can see a traffic jam. Uh, you can uh, also say a traffic congestion. Traffic jam means traffic congestion. Too many cars, so much traffic, it's called congestion. Repeat after me. Congestion. Uh, the third word. If you don't have, sorry, if you don't know how to answer a, pro, uh, a question uh, at the class, if you don't know how to solve a problem, you can consult someone else. If you have a medical problem, so you can consult. Consult means to ask for consultation, to ask for opinions from other people. So it's consult. Next, if something falls down, or becomes uh, smaller in amount, smaller in degree, so it is diminish. Diminish, to uh, become smaller in amount, to become a smaller in degree, so it's a verb meaning to become smaller, it's diminish. Uh, some problems or some uh, situations end up with serious problems, so end up with if you have a result in the end of a situation, so it ends up with a problem. So it's a phrasal verb, end up with. The government, of course, you know, the government, which is uh, responsible for everything in the country. Uh, it's again, repeat after me, the government. Government, the uh, council, which rules or governs the country, it's called government. When something is dangerous, you can also say it is hazardous. It is hazardous. So dangerous or hazardous. Repeat after me again. Asthma, congestion, consult, diminish, end up with government hazardous when something is impossible to change we call it irreversible irreversible it cannot be changed it's impossible to change it so irreversible okay next uh, before we started the word motoring and i told you it's the process of driving a vehicle. Now, the person who is driving a vehicle is called motorist. So the motorist is the person who drives a car, a taxi, a bus, and so on. Motorist, motorist. Procure. Uh, it's not easy to procure a house. It's not easy to get a house. It's not easy to procure a job. It's not easy to get Job. So when I say procure, it means to have something or to be able to get something. Next. Recently, recently, it means lately, in the recent few days, on the recent few years. 
So we always use recently when we talk about the past few days or the past few years. Self-employed. If you run your own business, if you have your own business, you don't work for a company, you don't work for a school, you are not a doctor in a hospital, so you are self-employed. You have your own business. Self-employed. Self-employed. It's an adjective. It means someone has his own business. Sometimes we can see uh, something like smoke in the air, but it's not smoke. It's a mix of smoke and fog. Fog that uh, occurs in the morning, the early morning. So it's called smoke. Smoke. Smoke and fog at the same time. So we have the word smoke. Squander. Squander. When I say don't waste your money, it means don't squander your money. I can squander money, I can squander time, I can squander my efforts, and so on. This is a verb. The noun, it can be a waste. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of effort, and so on. So again, repeat after me. From the beginning, motorist, procure, recently, self-employed, smog, squander, waste. Here are the words in Arabic. Please be careful. Write them down in your notebook. You have to memorize them in order to answer the translation question in the exam. Let's put these words in meaningful sentences in order to be able to know the meaning uh, more accurately. The first sentence, who can read? Yes, working in chemical factories is extremely hazardous. Working in chemical factories is extremely hazardous. Sentence two, it is hard to get a ticket, but I managed to procure one. I managed to get one. Three, traffic congestion gets worse during morning hours. Traffic congestion, I told you it means traffic jams, gets worse during morning hours. Asthma is a major health problem caused by air pollution or dust. It's a healthy problem in which you cannot breathe easily. Asthma. Some accidents happen because of careless motorists because of them careless motorists people who drive carelessly are careless motorists i have a terrible headache i think i should consult a doctor i have a terrible headache i think i should consult a doctor the government spent millions of dinars to combat drugs. The government spent millions of dinars to combat drugs. The last sentence. Our team squandered many chances, so they lost in the final match. When I say we squandered chances, we didn't score means, so we lost the final match. If we continue to waste energy, okay, what will happen? We will end up with serious environmental problems. If we continue to waste energy, we will end up with serious environmental problems. Mr. Adam has recently met his best friend at the coffee shop. Recently means lately, not far, uh, not long time ago, just a few days ago or a few hours ago and so on. I prefer to be self-employed to working for a bad company. No one wants to work for a bad uh, workplace, so he prefers to be self-employed. 
Smoking has caused irreversible damages to his lungs. If someone smokes heavily, of course, he have so many problems in his lungs, and these problems are irreversible. They cannot be turned back or changed. Nokia's popularity has diminished since Apple launched their first phone. I mean, after Apple had launched their first phone, the popularity of uh, Nokia has fallen down, means has diminished. The last sentence, the smog is expected to cause problems for motorists tonight. The smog is expected to cause problems for motorists tonight. Now it's time to know some set book questions about the lesson. In this lesson, you have to know how can we solve the problem of congestion or traffic congestion on the roads? How can we solve the problem of traffic jams? or traffic congestion on the roads. If you want, it's a very important question, by the way, you have to write it down, you have to memorize it. You have many options. You can reduce cars, you can build more roads and bridges, we can use public transportation, we can share cars with others, okay? we can replace big cars with smaller cars and so on. So to help solve the problem of congestion on the roads, you have to reduce the number of cars. You have to build more roads and bridges and flyovers. You can also use public transportation like uh, the train, like the bus and so on. This is the first question. Question number two, how can we diminish the amount of energy used in cars? I'm talking about energy in terms of motoring in cars, okay? Not at home. To diminish the amount of energy we use in cars, we should share cars with others. We shouldn't use our own cars all the time. I can share the cars with other people. We can use buses and trains. These are called public transportation. We can use buses and trains. We could replace big cars with smaller ones. As you all know, bigger cars use much fuel than smaller cars so we should use smaller cars so what will happen the last question what will happen if we don't do something to save energy what will happen if we don't do something or anything to save energy of course we will end up with irreversible environmental problems and of course oil will run out very soon and it's a serious problem uh, the final thing in this lesson or in this video it's about the summary making question i'd like you to learn how to summarize a text how to write a summary for a text be careful we have some tips and techniques we have some tips and techniques that will help you uh, summarize effectively. So the first thing is you have to read the instructions first. Any uh, summarizing or any summary making uh, question should have a question, should have a question. You should read it carefully. You should know what is uh, the main idea of the topic. The second step is to highlight, highlight or underline the major ideas in the text. We should know what are you going to write. So this is the second thing. Uh, three, you have to make simple and meaningful sentences. Simple sentences, don't write long sentences, just write simple ones and they should be meaningful, they should be uh, correct sentences in English. And this step is called paraphrasing. I mean, you write sentences in your own. Writing sentences in your own. 
You should avoid repetition. Don't repeat sentences. Don't repeat ideas. We have only four different ideas. Four different sentences. Number five, and which is very important, you should use linking words. What are linking words? We are going to know now about li linking words. And the a final thing, which is making sure that sentences are linked logically. The order is logic uh, or logical. You should be logical when you link or you make sentences. Okay. We have some things that you shouldn't do. Don't ever do that in summarizing or in the summary making question. The first thing is that you shouldn't do. Don't change the original meaning of the sentences. Don't bring uh, extra ideas away from the text. Please, you have to write from or the ideas of the text only. Don't include irrelevant information or specific details. Just write four sentences, four ideas related to the topic. You have to uh, write only four sentences. Don't write less or more than four sentences. Don't change the uh, format. We are not writing separate sentences. We are writing a paragraph. I mean write a sentence, then a full stop, and right after the sentence, write another one, and so on. Be careful. It's very important, and it's easy, by the way. Just take your time when you answer this, uh, the summary-making question. Here we have an example. I'm asking you to summarize and paraphrase the following mess, uh, passage in an answer to the following question. As I told you, there is a question. Read the question clearly. You should know or you should be aware about uh, the question in order to be able to summarize. The question is, what are the different types of pollution and their causes? What are the different types of pollution and their causes. Take your time. I'll be back in a minute. Of course, as I told you, you have to highlight the information which answers the question. Take your time, bring or highlight or underline only four ideas. Okay, the first idea that we have here, which is about, uh, we are talking about different types. So the first type is air pollution can be caused by particles, liquids, gases that make the air harmful to breathe. This is the first idea about air pollution. The second one, soil pollution can be caused by pesticides leakage from chemical tanks, oil spills, and other chemicals. The third one about water. Water pollution can be caused by waste products, sewage, oil spills, and litter, and so on. And the final one, the last one, the last idea about radioactive, radioactive pollution. It can be caused by leaks or spills of radioactive materials. Now we have four different types of pollution and their causes. If you write down these sentences as they are without any changes, of course, you will never get the full mark. If you want the full mark, you have to paraphrase. I mean, you have to write sentences of your own. Okay? So, if you want to paraphrase the four sentences that we have in the text, let's take your time first. You have to Think of sentences of your own. Okay, the first one, air pollution can be caused by, particle, uh, by uh, particles, liquids, or gases. If you want to paraphrase this one, I mean you write it in uh, different words. In different words, it will be like this. Air pollution is caused by harmful things in the air. Soil pollution can be caused, we are talking about the second sentence, soil pollution can be caused by pesticides, 
you can make passive or this is passive uh, turn it back into active sentence pesticides can cause soil pollution water pollution can be caused by waste products sewage oil spills if you make it of your own throwing waste sewage and oil spills pollute water radioactive pollution can be caused by leaks or spills of radioactive materials so leaks of radioactive substances lead to radioactive pollution we change it a little uh, in the sentences to make uh, them uh, meaningful sentences and different from the original text it's very important to write sentences or to, to write something called cohesive devices or linking words we should use some uh, words like the following moreover we should write in addition you can write besides and in the end you should write finally these words make uh, the text more cohesive uh, they are used to link sentences together after paraphrasing the four sentences it's time to write down the four sentences paragraph who can read who can read yes air pollution is caused by harmful things in the air moreover pesticides can cause spoil pollution uh, soil pollution in addition throwing waste sewage and oil spills pollute water finally leaks of radioactive sub, uh, substances lead to radioactive pollution here we have only four sentences not more not less and different from the original text but the same idea here is the uh, summary making question thank you very much for your time i hope you enjoyed this video and see you in next videos inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh